All right, we're continuing with our review of each of the 2018 state GHSA state finals. We're going to pick it back up today with the 3A game, which was Peach County and Cedar Grove, I believe. So we want to watch. Now we're going to have a miss hold at around the 35-yard line. And this is the opening kickoff of the game. You can see it right around, right there. Uh, it's a takedown hold out in the open field. It, it happens away from the ball, true, but open field like that. And the kickoffs are hard because you can't really say this is not having an effect on the play, especially when you look kind of look at the way the kickoffs teams are run. So everyone has their lane. Uh, let's see. This is a better view. Everyone runs their lane. See, so they're all running lanes. And the way this hold happens, it takes him, this, this player, out of his lane uh, illegally. And then he kind of holds him down the ground for a while. And then as you can see, that run's going to come about where his lane would have been. So even though the action happens away from the ball, being out in the open field like that and possibly affecting the play in that manner, uh, we should call this. Uh, now the next play is a kickoff. This is about 63 plays later in the game. And we call this one. Same play, same type of play, probably the same player. Just going the other way. Right here at the bottom of the screen. And this one was called... I think we had th three flags on the play. Yeah, so we pick it up. Good job of coming back and picking that up later in the game. Scrimmage play, we're going to miss a hold by number 8, which is right there. Let's see the end zone angle. Let me show a little bit better. So there's number 8. So he's going to come in. Just a takedown hold. Right there, the point of attack. It obviously has an effect on the play. Uh, so this, this should have been a foul that we missed. Here we're going to have a good call and a takedown hold right there at the middle. The one that back so you can see it. See, so he's just going to grab him. Just takes him down. Uh, this was correctly called. Uh, good job there. I don't know if you really see it any better from the end zone view. I think some players get in the way. Uh, yeah. All right, moving on to pass interference. It's going to be right there toward the top of the screen. And there you can see he gets there just a tad early. Uh, we look at, this would be your be headline judge's call. Yeah, he just gets there just a tad early, uh, but definitely has an effect on the play. Knocks him out of his out of his route. I don't think you see it any better from the end zone. No. Next play is very similar. This one we're gonna call. No, this next, another play is very similar, but we, this is still DPI. The one we call end zone view. Shows it a lot better. Key thing here is he never looks back toward the ball. Uh, he has no idea where the ball is. He's completely playing the receiver. He's going to wrap him up. So good job throwing the flag there. Uh, they don't get a benefit of the doubt if they're not if they're not looking back. They get no benefit of the doubt. So good call there. This is one that's similar to that first one. Still so look at the top of the screen. Headline judges call, and then this one's a little. I think he's. I think he's a little uh, earlier on this one than on that first one, but still a good call. Good job, headline judge. This play we're gonna have a good call for roughing the passer. See, it's that extra kind of sling down. 
that gets them. But, you know, the slinging them down the ground, that was unnecessary. That just little extra effort is going to be what causes the foul. Good job, referee, there of flagging that. Watch the mechanics of this umpire. A good job of turning with the pass. He's just going to pivot with the pass. That's a great job. Looks good. Looks sharp. That's if you're an umpire watching at home. That's that's how you do it. Look at some mechanical things for our deeps. This first one, crew of seven. Remember, crew of seven. Side judge, field judge. You should never beam back at the end of a punt. Uh, just not necessary. And a crew of seven. The back judge is the sole responsibility for punts. It's all on him. Sideline to sideline. So, side judge, no need to beam back that there. And it's just something we kind of got to get in the habit of doing when we transition to crew of seven. Another punt here. Remember, take note, we're, we're snapping from inside the 40. So you can see the side judge, he's on the goal line. Anytime we snap a punt from inside the 40, we want all three deeps on the goal line. So good job there. Uh, we just want to make sure back judges on this, we want to make sure we're straddling the goal line. Because if this ball goes up in the air, if we have players closer and they're going to make a play on it, we're not in position to see where the ball is. Uh, in regards to the goal line. So we want to make sure we're straddling that goal line when a play like that happens. Uh, last punt we're going to look at, at least for mechanics. In a play like this, we want to make sure we are, you know, we would rather have the, we'd rather back judge and field judge be behind the inside judge too behind the ball instead of even with it on the line. Just in case something happens and we need, it's a better cone of vision for one. And it helps us get to the goal line quicker in case we have to for some reason. So just be a little, instead of being a straight line with the ball here, we want to be, we want all three to be a little bit behind for cone of vision and to get to the goal line a little bit better. We're going to have a deep pass down the right sideline. Good coverage, good cushioning by the side judge. Only thing is, uh, this is not your spot. With deeps, we only spot the ball inside the two-yard line. So there's no need to come up here and grab that spot. Just uh, If you want to yell at the wing guy, the yard line, and get on the radio and tell him, that's fine. Most of these wings are going to be able to do a good job of grabbing these spots downfield. So we would just let them take it. One thing we want to make sure we have is good field awareness. We always want to know where we're all, where we are in the field. So here, field judge, well, when this play happens, we will want to be, we really want to be about right here where this camera guy is. Goal line extended. Uh, instead, it looks like we we overran the the goal line a little bit. Come where we are, we we want, just want to make sure you never overrun that goal line. See, so it looks like you're behind a little bit. Just feel the awareness. Always know where the pylon is, especially where the goal line is. See, right here, we want to be about right here, just in case that play threatens the goal line even more. So just feel the awareness, know where you are in a play. This one we call false start. I, I do not see it. Um, I've, I've slowed this down. Here, I think maybe it may be maybe this player right here. He may lift his hand up a tab before the ball snap, but um, I just don't see it anywhere. Maybe I missed something. If I miss it, uh, tell me in the comments. Same thing here. Call another false start. Uh, and again, I'm not I'm not seeing anything. But again, if I'm missing this, please tell me in the comments. But just, you want false stars to be be clear and evident.
Okay, this is this is a good play to look at. We want to watch action right in this area. Look at that, right there on the 19. This this receiver here, OPI is off the table because we have a pass on the line of scrimmage. Uh, so the question is, blindside illegal blindside block or targeting? I think illegal blindside block is off the table. Because if you look at the end zone view, I think the defender sees it. And you see the defender kind of brace up. Uh, what we got to look at, though, is is this targeting. Now, we do we have a launch that's clear from this angle. Remember, launches are only indicators of targeting. Just because you have a launch does not mean you're always going to have targeting. You still have to have that contact, to the forceful contact to the head or neck area. Target uh, Launching is just an indicator. So we have it. So the question is, is there forceful contact to the head or neck area? And this angle you can also see, I think we have a better view of um, whether, why it's not a blindside block, illegal blindside block. You see the, the defender, he braces himself right here. So I think illegal blindside block is off the table. So the question is forceful contact to the head or neck area. It's close. Um... Sometimes when I look at it, I think he gets them in the shoulder sometimes, like right there. It looks like he's got them in the head and neck area. Um, it's just unclear. But uh, we would, we always err on the side of caution. So the question is, whose call is this? Um, this is the deep's call. Uh, that, uh, I, I say deep, be the field judge. This is your key. Anytime you see that guy crack in like that, uh, be alert. All right? Just because there's a screen pass on the scrimmage, we still have to be alert on that. If for some reason the field judge is screened out, which he could be there, back judge, you might be able to help in on that. Um, but it's, it's mainly going to be the key of the field judge in this this particular instance. But you know, it's you're looking through a couple of guys with traffic, so. Maybe something you really can't see that well. All right, is this a catch or no catch? Uh, either way, I did a good job with the headline judge there. I'm rolling on that quickly and selling it. We'll look at a couple of views here. It's it's close. I think the GPV view in a second is going to be a little more indicative. It's hard to tell right there. I think what 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 hurt him is when he his little stutter step right right there. It looks like he kind of uses the ball on the ground to kind of keep himself up. So it's hard to tell here. It looks like it may hit the ground right there, possibly. Of course, you know, the, the headline judge doesn't have the benefit of this replay like we do. So it's like he may have trapped it there, but even if he didn't, this little step right there, uh, it's hard to tell if he has control of it. It's like he may have good saw control of it, and then it hits the ground. And that's when, since that's when the line judge, headline judge makes the signal, I kind of think that's what he was looking at, which I'm okay with. Um... Because, you know, it's hard to tell if he really has firm control of the ball at that point. Here's another angle. See, it looks like... It looks like he did not let it hit the ground initially. It looks like he just keeps it above the ground there. But then that little thing right there, and then the ball comes loose. I think that's where he, where the line judge, headline judge ruled incomplete. So a good call. Of course, he has to make that split-second decision in real time. So it was, it was a lot harder for him. But I think he made the right call there. All right, rules. This is a kickoff. We're going to have a free kick out of bounds along the will be the right sideline if you're in perspective of the kicking team. So the return team is going to let the, elect to put this ball on the 35. But the problem you see here is we put the ball in the middle of the field. 
uh, this should, would need to be on this hash mark right here. So that's where the kick went out of bounds. That's the hash mark we're going to set at. Just because they elect to put on the 35 does not mean they get to set the ball in the middle of the field or on the other hash. It's still a foul. Uh, this is still a penalty that's being assessed. This is a result of the penalty. So it still needs to be on that hash mark. Here we're going to have a good call for a legal block in the back by the side judge. Right in front of the return. This is one of the benefits of a crew of seven. We get an extra pair of eyes on kick returns. And this is that weird transition. So, you know, remember, this is the back judge's key until this ball is caught. At this point, this is now actually the key of the side judge, and the back judge would take everything around here. So either one of them could have got this call because it happened so close to that transition. Um, but the important thing is we got it, and we made the right call. So good job. Side judge picking that up. And headline judge, be careful there. But, and good job of picking up a foul in that weird kind of transition period. Uh, and it is a foul. You know, it's not much of a push in the back, but it's still an illegal push in the back that puts that player out of position to make a play. So, good job there for the call. Here we're going to have a personal foul at the end of the play on number 11, which is okay. Uh, I just think we probably also should have got number 7 as well. And it's going to happen right in here. You know, we got number 11 for a personal foul. Uh, I think probably should have just popped number 7 as well. Um, just go ahead and knock them. They, they both committed a foul. Um, just go ahead and knock them both. And I understand the adage, we always only see the retaliation. And that's very true. Um, but benefit of video reviews, we can look at back at it later and see that we should have got them both. But good job of getting, at least getting one of them. Because this is play 106, so we're in that latter half of the game. And it's a close game, so we want to make sure we're getting stuff like that. Here's going to be an interesting one for discussion of horse collar. Um, it's just, I don't think this is a horse collar, but it's at least worth discussing and considering. So the rule of a horse collar is, you know, you grab them up high around the, around the collar area, and you pull them forcefully, change their direction, and then you have to pull them down to the ground. And this one... The initial pull does not get the runner to the ground, but he, see, he, he's down right there. The elbow comes down to the ground. Um, so it's an interesting case to discuss a horse collar. Um, you know, since, like I said, you have to pull him down to the ground, and he does technically get down to the ground, uh, although a little bit delayed. So it's just it's an interesting play to discuss the horse collar on. I do not think this is a horse collar. I do not think it kind of meets that uh, criteria for it. But like I said, it's just it's an interesting case. Uh, it's trying to show, discuss it, kind of lobby back and forth the rules and criteria for a horse collar. We have a philosophy question. We're gonna have a failed screenplay. And we're going to have linemen more than uh, 30 yards downfield. I think all I have on this is the end zone and the tight, so it's hard to tell. But the philosophy on this is, even though the pass ends up beyond the line of scrimmage, uh, the receiver is right at the line of scrimmage and maybe a little bit behind when he would have caught the ball. So from a velocity standpoint, you have an incomplete screen play you would not call an eligible downfield. So it's a good job of holding off on calling this foul. Just let the let the play play out. Incomplete pass. There's going to be a scream on the line of scrimmage. Just let that one go. Here 
This one's close to an illegal shift and one I think we could, we could definitely support. See, you're going to have the running back go in motion. He's not really done going. He's not really done moving when the receiver goes in motion here. Definitely not a second. So this would be a good one we could support an illegal shift. And the last one we want to look at, big play in the game. <clears throat> and then we, we flag a UNS on this receiver for taking his helmet off. That's not a that's not a violation in the Fed code. There's no rule in FHS to support taking the helmet off in and of itself. Uh now you could stretch that a little bit and consider it, you know, celebration or whatever. But you know, remember we want to we want to allow some kind of youthful exuberance. I think used to be the key phrase. You kind of want to take into account the context of the game. He's running off the field. He just scored a big touchdown to possibly win the state championship for his school. He's excited. He's running off the field. Takes the helmet off. You know, there there was no celebrated act. If you watch this, watch the later angles. He goes. He runs straight to the sideline. He's not celebrating or anything, you know. This it's it's. I think we could have let this one go, considering the context of the moment. Um, you know, and I think it's one of those things. Any coach thinking rationally would be okay with not flagging this, even if the coach on the sideline said, "No, no, you need to flag that." You know, if it were his player that did it, he wouldn't want it flagged. And I think just stepping back, context of the game, just don't flag this. He. Youthful exuberance. Now, if this is, if it's 40 to nothing, and this does this in third quarter, maybe then you talk to him. I don't know if you'd still flag it, but allow some youthful exuberance. All right, that is it for the 3A game. We may be back next week with a special topic. There's a couple of things we've seen in the finals as far as when you would put time on the clock, or when, not time on the clock, when you would allow a team to choose to start the ball, start the clock on the snap. So uh, we may do a special topic video on that next week. If not, we'll come back in two weeks with the 4A game. So see you then.